Hello, my name is Elias Logan, and I'm an expert and dealer in authentic ancient Greek, Roman, Biblical, Byzantine coins and artifacts. Over the years I've identified over 32,000 authentic ancient coins and artifacts, and I'm known worldwide as a numismatic means, meaning the study of coins, and antique expert. I have an eBay store with over 6,000 items, and it's accessible through my site trustedcoins.com. The reason I made this video is because I would like to show you some authentic ancient Greek, Roman, uh, Roman provincial, uh, and medieval Byzantine coins, coins, and show you how they look like, and what's the history behind them a little bit, and what time periods they're from. So let's begin. Uh, let me let's start off with ancient Greek coins. Let me tell you a little bit about ancient Greek coins. Ancient Greek uh, coinage started in Lydia in about 650 BC. That was the earliest Greek coins that are, you know, struck. Those are very, very rare and sell for thousands, if not tens of thousands, some of them go into the hundreds of thousands of dollars on uh, major auctions. But uh, the coins are from later time periods uh, when there were more uh, ancient um, Greek city-states and more um, kings and, um, you know, of uh, different, you know, empires. Uh, came along, you have a lot more ancient Greek coinage to to be to behold. So let's start let's start off with something very popular, like a coin of Philip Philip the Second. Philip the Second was the father of Alexander the Great. So I'm just showing you his coin as an example of what a you could say a typical ancient um, Greek bronze coin looks like. So you could see from um, on the certificate uh, the 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 coin enlarged, but um, you see it has the head of Apollo on it and uh, the young youth on a horse. Uh, Philip II being uh, Alexander the Great's father, uh, his horses wound up winning in the ancient Greek Olympic Games. So that's why he has um, the victorious um, youth on the horse the athletic, from the athletic event. And what usually happens on ancient Greek coins, so if, if it was of an ancient Greek city-state, it would have a city name on the back and some sort of a deity on the front. So here we have a deity, the Apollo on the front, and uh, the, the actual king's name, Philip in Greek on the back. So you see that that's how it would look like, Philippoi, that's uh, ancient Greek text. So that's kind of interesting. This is what it looks like. So I would say this: uh, if if you were looking at an American um, a nickel, uh, this this would be around the size. Uh, you see, it's also this green color. Well, originally when it was struck, obviously it looked more like the color of the penny. But over the years, it develops what's called a patina, a patination, uh, meaning that the top layer of the coin oxidizes and gives it a nice green look to it. So, the same idea is with uh, the Statue of Liberty. The Statue of Liberty used to be of a bronze, kind of copper color, and then it turned green over time because uh, uh, the w weather and water uh, created a patina on the Statue of Liberty. So, that's why it's that color that it is nowadays. So, that's an example of a typical ancient Greek coin. So, we're talking about ancient Greek coins spanning from about uh, anywhere 600 Six hundred something BC to let's say about even two hundred AD because you could say the Roman Empire Empire took over, but there were some ancient Greek uh, city states that had some quasi autonomous coinage, meaning that they were under the they paid taxes to the Romans, but they had the chance to mint some coins that were just in the name of the city rather than uh, with the emperor's portrait on it. So they they could reach about to about you know 200 AD, and later they were uh, re replaced by other coinage. So 200, 250, um, 270 AD. So that's kind of interesting. So next let's uh, let's ch take a look at some um, ancient Greek coins, um, some more ancient Greek coins, specifically the silver coins that they had. Uh, this coin, for example, was of one of Alexander the Great's generals. Uh, it's it's the same exact type as Alexander the Great had. It features Hercules on the front. Uh, actually, Alexander the Great as Hercules in the front. 
uh, that's his portrait, and Hercules would wear the lion skin headdress of the Nemean lion, and um, Zeus sitting on the back. The, this, this coin specifically is of Antiochus the first, who took uh, the the coin of Alexander the Great had, and because it was so popular, he put his name on the back and just continued the style of the coins. That's the interesting thing about ancient um, Greek coins of Alexander the Great, because his big uh, silver Greek coins and uh, the smaller drachma issues, they um, continued uh, being issued for another several hundred years. Um, exactly with the portrait, with like the, like this coin, but uh, of course the style changed a little bit, it, but it still had Alexander the Great's name on it. So that's what's kind of interesting. There's uh, you could probably hundreds, if not thousands, of different types to really look into. And um, since there were so many struck, Alexander the Great alone. Uh, to the best of my memory, struck about 16 million of these big uh, tetradrachm coins during his lifetime. But can you imagine if the smaller denomination of the silver, he, how much he struck, and then the, also the bronze? So uh, that is why actually um, ancient uh, Greek coins are quite affordable, especially of Alexander the Great. Uh, I have some coins in my store for as low as $20, uh, sometimes, not all the time. But in higher conditions, obviously, it's going to go higher. So that th this is an example of you know also on the backs of my certificates I usually have a historical synopsis of the item so if you're giving it as a gift um, you can read up on it and the person really appreciates it, it has a lot you know it's in full color uh, it's high quality uh, the paper is also acid free so it's not going to yellow over time so that's the idea of it so that you could uh, store this and uh, this paper should be you know around for centuries so that's why I'm happy about it so. That was a that was a tetradrachm coin. The tetradrachm coins were about uh, 16 grams a piece, and the drachma coins. Tetra means four, and uh, drachma means the drachma, which is the basic unit, which is about four grams. So uh, it's four times four, so it's between 16 and 17 grams. That's what tetradrachms look usually were. So this is another um, tetradrachm of the Greek city of um, Amphipolis. That's in Macedonia, and this one features Artemis on it. See, this is Artemis, and she has a quiver on her back, and it has um, a club on the back. So it's a beautiful design, beautiful depiction, and this is what it looks like on the, the actual coin looks like. Um, I hope you could see this. You could see much better enlargements, and this coin is even much more beautiful in real life than than just looking at the picture. So. This is what it looks like. So this is an, another example of the tetradrachm standard that was um, a standard for ancient Greek coins for uh, several hundred years. There was um, another uh, standard of weight of measure of silver. Uh, there were there were a couple competing standards, but the tetradrachm was a very major standard for a while, especially because Alexander the Great he conquered so many lands. He wound up. Um, Standardizing the coinage, he wound up bringing the coins with his portrait on it, and um, people liked them and they used them, and uh, they wound up striking coins with his portrait and name on for for several hundred years afterwards. So that's what's kind of interesting. So now I'm going to get into a coin of Lysimachus. Lysimachus was um, one of Alexander the Great's generals, and this is actually a drachma coin. Remember, I was talking about how. Um, it breaks down into um, denominations of uh, four of these l smaller silver coins, and that that's what winds up happening. You see, this is the drachma, and this one, uh, because you know he you know was a good friend of Alexander, uh, and he was um, king after his death. Um, he struck actual coins with the portrait of Alexander, uh, having the horn of Zeus Amon. Zeus Amon uh, meaning. Um, yeah, of the Zeus that they were worshiping, that usually has a had a horn. See, that's Alexander the Great's portrait, and on the back we have Athena holding Nike, and you see it says here Basileus. Okay, over here Basileus. If you would ever see this on ancient Greek coins, that means king, and then over over here it says in 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 Greek Lysimachus. So that's what it looks like in Greek Basileus. Lysimachus. So Basileus means king, and uh, Lysimachus means you know Lysimachus. And let me, let me show you the difference between the two. All right. So 
you could actually, if you think about this, if you know American coinage, you could say like this is the old silver dollar, and this would be like the quarter dollar if you think about it. It breaks down into four, or maybe the founding fathers um, uh, used you know what worked for hundreds of thousands of years, and uh, they issued their own coins with that. But yeah, so as I, as I'm gonna recap. The, the tetradrachm was about 16 grams of, of silver, and uh, the drachm was about 4 grams. So that's kind of interesting. So we have the different um, Greek city-states, we have the different um, um, Greek kings, and there were so many different territories. Uh, for example, after Alexander the Great um, you know, passed on, uh, his generals split up his territories, and you know, they created, the, for example, Ptolemaic Kingdom Egypt. Um, you know Cleopatra, the famous Cleopatra, the lover of Julius Caesar and Mark Anthony? Well, she was of, of the Ptolemaic dynasty uh, that was started you know, several hundred years beforehand, um, somewhere around 281 or 300 BC. Um, you, could look, you could look it up and for more information on my site. Um, <clears throat> so, then, alright, so we have the different Greek kingdoms. And, uh, of course, uh, the Rome was developing for for several hundred years and eventually it came up with its own standard of coinage and their, their own standard of coinage was the silver denarius so we're talking about Roman Republic Roman Republic was from around uh, the, at least the silver coins that I usually have are usually from about 200 BC to about 45 BC and um, they are look kinda like this what's interesting about Roman Republican coins is that they uh, talk about uh, different stories about the foundations of Rome. Um, like, for example, n not all of them, but different ones tell a different story depending on the name of the, uh, of the money here. So, this one, for example, features Roma. Roma is the patron deity of, um, of Rome. And uh, the, the reason she's wearing a helmet is that she was, she's kind of similar to um, Athena. You know, uh, Athena was... Um, you know, of Athens, she was the patron deity of Athens. So Rome had Roma, and they, they looked very similar. And I know Romans like to import a lot of, um, you know, cultural things into their, um, you know, culture. So that's kind of interesting. So Roma is depicted often on ancient uh, silver Roman Republic coins, and a lot of different scenes on the back are depicted. Sometimes it could be a god or goddess. Sometimes it could be uh, some sort of festival being celebrated, or um, you know, gods of fertility, uh, gods of the harvest. So uh, a lot of different stories can be even remembered and passed on because of the coinage they have. They, they, they might have even used them as um, educational tools. And um, what's interesting about money is, is that notice these coins that they don't have any, a portrait of any Roman emperor on it, and. Um, but they do have, uh, for example, this one is Sex Pompeius Faustulus Monier. So, what, what there usually is, is there usually text either on the front or in the back that, you know, alludes to the Monier. The Monier was a uh, patrician, fa uh, a family of patrician or origin that was in charge of striking coins at that particular time for maybe the year or two. So, the, this coin, for example, is from 137 BC. Yes, that's over 2100 years old. So, that's kind of interesting. And um, this is what it looks like. Uh, I don't know if the camera has any justice to it, but it's a very beautiful coin. And it features uh, Romulus and Remus, the twins, the, the founders of Rome, and the farmer on the left-hand side, uh, Faustulus, who found them, who found them and raised them as his own. So th that's kind of interesting, the story. and It brings back and uh, it makes you want to study the history. And as always, I have the historical context of the item on the back, so um, a lot of these stories are already uh, researched. So you have one-stop place where you can look at the coin and the ha actual history behind it without having to, uh, you know, having a degree from, uh, you know, a major university. So that's the, that's the benefit that people get when they look at my coins. So let's move on from the Roman Republic into the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire started uh, probably with Julius Caesar being a dictator the, and Augustus assuming power from 27 BC uh, to, um, to about 476 AD, that's the Roman 
the Roman Empire fell around there, 476, to the best of my memory. But um, you could do further research on that yourself. So the Roman Empire uh, featured coins in the bronze, silver, and gold uh, of all different kinds of types. And um, the Roman imperial coinage yeah, pretty much featured the different Roman emperors. And on the backs of the coins is usually some sort of deity. Um, as as there were really no newspapers at the time, a lot of times the Roman emperor would announce a brand new construction project. Or um, he, if he won a war, for example. Or, for example, we have a coin of Roman Emperor Trajan. Trajan's column, you could type it into Wikipedia or Google, Trajan's column still stands. His monument that he built, it's a humongous um, column that stands and records his victory in the Dacian Wars. So you could go to ancient, ancient today Rome and see his column that still stands. So this, this is a silver coin. Notice it's a, of the similar size as the last one. So the Romans, when, when they had a good standard, they kept using that standard. So th this coin is from around 103 to 111 AD. And it features uh, on the back, you see a Dacian captive uh, being sad that he's been captured. So uh, Trajan's column actually um, talks about the different you know, victories that he has. And it's very beautiful uh, designs in there that tell exactly what happened and it's a very good historical record because it shows how the um, Romans were dressed and a lot of these different things. So the Roman Emperor Trajan on this coin he depicted his uh, victory over, over Dacia, the province of Dacia, which he was happy about, which brought him a lot of money to build a lot of money, money and other goods you could say. At those times, of course, there was slavery too, and when they captured properties, um, you know, lands, they took a lot of people into slavery too, and um, that allowed the Roman, um, the people in Rome, to enjoy an unprecedented lifestyle and uh, for a long time. So this is what it looks like. It's it's about the size of a dime, and this is what the reverse looks like. You could obviously look at and see these much better at my site, but yeah, as usual. Uh, there's history in the back, and uh, it's very professionally done. So the Roman Empire, there, there were um, there were main coins where they were struck in the mint of Rome, but well, the Roman Empire obviously conquered a lot of different lands. And uh, for those local lands, what they actually allowed them to do is, first of all, pay their own taxes. <laughs> uh, let's not forget that. But um, they allowed them to issue coinage with the portrait of the emperor on it and and with the legends around instead of being in Latin to be in Greek uh, especially if it was an ancient Greek city and um, let me give you let me show you an example so that that we're gonna talk about is actually Roman provincial coins because you know Rome, Rome had a lot of provinces it had Africa it had um, you know most of Europe and um, in each province there's a lot of different cities a lot of ancient Greek cities that were that reverted to issuing of ancient Roman coinage. So this coin, for example, it's a very rare coin of Roman Emperor Nero. Uh, you know, the famous Nero, the one that fiddled while Rome burned, and his wife Papaya. Uh, let's, let's just put make the story short, but uh, Papaya, you know, didn't survive under Nero. Um, but the, this is a, the, the, this is a coin, for example, from the coin on of Galatia, and you see the the, the text around it is in Greek. Um, most other dealers really don't uh, go through the extra trouble to uh, give you the original Greek legend that it has, but um, I do. I go the extra mile. Uh, the, this coin, you see, the, the, this is what Nero looked like, Roman Emperor Nero, and that's his wife. The interesting thing is that uh, some Roman emperors and some coins are very rare, and they furnish a very, very, um, very good historical record a, of um, the different uh, personalities. So, some coins are available only from the provinces with certain porches in them, so that's kind of interesting. And um, yeah, the, that's another area to collect. 
the provincial coins also they had a lot of different you could say Greek influenced or they retained the Greek cultural icons on the reverses of the coins along with the city names so you would see on the front uh, the the portrait of the emperor with his uh, name either in Greek or sometimes Latin if if the if the colony was Latinized uh, it had Latin inscription but it would still be a provincial coin so it would have the inscription either in Greek or Latin in the front and on the back it would have the city name in Greek or Latin and it would have a deity uh, it could be uh, Aphrodite it could be Ares it could be it could be Hermes, the ancient Greek gods, and sometimes very, very rare depictions. Like, for example, we have a coin of Julia Domna over here, and this coin of Julia Domna is from Marcianopolis, and it's from circa 193 to 211 AD. And this specific coin has the three graces. You see on the back, um, probably see it better on this picture, but you see this one woman, two women, and three women. This one is showing her. Uh, buttocks, so she's facing with her backside towards you, and these ones are, you know, totally nude, um, facing our our direction. You see, and the name of the city around in in Greek, and um, this is uh, the wife of uh, Roman Emperor Septimius Severus, and that that's the, that's one of the beauties of uh, Roman provincial coinage because you could find some stuff that you do you wouldn't get just from the Roman imperial mints. So, th this is what it looks like. And um, you could probably say this is close to the American half dollar size, a little bit smaller. Um, if you're looking at it, it's very interesting. It furnishes, a, furnishes an interesting record. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's the interesting thing about the Roman provincial coins too. Check out uh, n another interesting thing about Roman provincial coins is that uh, the, the Romans conquered a lot of provinces. Like for example. Um, uh, Jer ancient Jerusalem uh, was a Roman province under the, uh, was a Roman province during the time of uh, Jesus Christ, and uh, you know the story goes that you know the Romans were there and there was a procurator by the name of Pontius Pilate. Yes, the, there, were, there was an actual procurator called Pontius Pilate that existed during the time, and this is a Roman provincial coin uh, of with Pontius Pilate around, you know. Under so this is a, this is the time of Tiberius, uh, from 14 to so this coin was struck from circa 30 to 31 AD. So the story goes with the coin of Pontius Pilate, is that with Pontius Pilate is he's the one that was a Roman procurator, you know, the Roman government in Jerusalem, and he he is said uh, you know to have uh, Jesus crucified, and he kind of um, you know let the let him be crucified, and that's what it looks like. It has elitus in it. So this this is kind of interesting because what we're holding here is a rare piece of historical significance. Um, Pontius Pilate being <clears throat> very important biblically and historically, and th this is what it looked like. And on the back, you see you have a little brief history about it. So that's the interesting thing about Roman provincial coins. <clears throat> the, 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 just the idea of ancient coins are kind of interesting. So, around uh, 280 AD, 290, uh, Roman provincial coins they they stopped being minted, and um, what wound up happening is that there was a standardization all around the Roman Empire. So the ancient Greek cities um, basically they standardized the coinage and no more of those and they had a lot more uh, just standardized rigid kind of coinage but it, it's, it's still nice it still provides an interesting furnishing of the record and you could study the economy you could study the times uh, through through the what ancient coins look like so here for example we have an ancient uh, Ro Roman coin of Constantine the Great this one is after he um, passed on uh, it has uh, interesting Christian iconography on it because See, he has the veiled. Um, see, he's wearing a very wearing a veil, and on the back, here he's seen on a chariot, and the hand of God, kind of, you know, putting his hand out, and he's kind of like reaching towards God, so he's taking the chariot up to heaven. So that's kind of interesting. 
It's not the biggest type, but it's very interesting because of it's Constantine the Great, and he's also known as Saint Constantine, and this is what it looked like. This is not the largest of coins, and obviously Constantine the Great had a lot of different coins. So I'm just trying to describe that. Uh, so let's recap. So we had Ancient Greek, then we had followed by Roman Republic, and then we had Roman Provincial Coins. Roman Provincial Coins were uh, under the Roman Empire, and the Ro Ro Roman Empire Coins continued, but Roman Provincial Coins uh, discontinued at around 280 AD. Um, <clears throat> and Roman Provincial Coins, they were from about anywhere from the time of Augustus to until a little bit after. So this is another example of what uh, standardized the coin after those uh, coinage reforms were. The, this is uh, from 308 AD, and it features uh, the the portrait of Maximinus II, and in the back you have Jupiter. Uh, it's kind of interesting. It has that beautiful patina on it, a nice condition, and um, very interesting to to behold. So now that we explored the Roman Empire, let's get to the last. Um, coin that I'm going to show you. The last coin is going to be of the Byzantine Empire from around 1025 AD. And what, what's interesting about the Byzantine Empire, uh, Rome fell around 476 AD and then uh, the Byzantine Empire which was based in Constantinople. When I showed you Con Constantine the Great, he founded a new capital that is um, now in Turkey and um, there it became the seat of his government the cap the Roman Empire had two capitals by that time and um, Constantinople continued and it stood for another thousand years so you could say the Roman Empire didn't really fall just the uh, part that had Rome in it <laughs> basically uh, so what's interesting about uh, Byzantine coins is that you know they were very much Christian oriented so this coin from 1025 AD has the portrait of Jesus Christ, and in the back it says Isus Christos Basileus Basile, so uh, meaning uh, Jesus Christ, King of Kings, and that's what it looked like. This is a uh, an example in nice condition, but I have these in all different price ranges, so they're quite affordable. So 1025 A.D. ancient uh, medieval coin of uh, the Byzantine Empire. So I I've shown you. Uh, basic a brief, brief overview so this way if you're in the categories of my story you have a general idea of what they mean what a Roman provincial, what an ancient Greek, what a uh, Byzantine coin means my site Trusted Coins is the place you would visit I have a couple different channels um, Amazon and eBay and also I have a fantastic email update list with a free email update list allows you to get more informed about ancient coins get access to a few reference books that you know, may help you in the, if you decide to collect in the ancient coins. And so uh, you may want to check out my site, Trust the Coins. And I wish you a great time. And uh, thanks for tuning in to my great uh, coin uh, introduction broadcast. Thank you.